Hello and welcome back to Oscar Modeling. And this is part four of the USS Nimitz um, build. I'm currently up to the deck which I've been looking at. Now all the other parts I spoke about in the in part three are all painted and drying in the base coat. That's all the hangar bay um, walls and so forth. Um, now I'm looking at the uh, flight deck and I want to prime and paint this uh, the same color that I've done the hangar deck floor and but before I do that I need to do the elevators because I need them matching the black so it needs to be painted at the same time preferably so I can have them look like they're all one part if I were to paint them separately it's a chance they might be too dark or too light or whatever but if I can paint them while they're there it'd be much better but having said that they need photo etch added to them now I've just completed one so if we can have a close look here this is your elevator the plastic photo etch that's on the on it has to be removed and that's no problem I can I can take them. I'll just cut that off and sand it back flat. The photo etch that goes on here, there's four of them, so you need four pieces. There's our photo etch, and there's the pieces. Now, these are really tricky to bend because the instructions... Okay, here we are in the Eddard instructions, and there's our picture of how we need to bend these okay so to start with it is absolutely impossible to bend it the way they've got shown you just can't do it that top how they want the top bit bent over into a u shape so that it sits on the edge here where that piece is removed you can't because there's no um markings under the etch for that there is only the only marking on the etch itself and i don't know if we'll be able to see but we'll try and have a look at it it only allows for one bend not two so let me have a look here try and get this so you can see the little round circles are the is the line and you'll see at the edge at this edge here, I need a pointing tool, but at this edge here, there's just one line. But they want you to fold it twice on that edge into a U shape. It's just not possible. Um, even if you tried to, there's no way you could bend that straight. It would just be way too thin. The gap between there and there is like a millimeter. It's not possible. So... I bent it once so that that little lip that's bent will sit on the edge of there and it will hang down like it should. And then this um, grating part here, the net or whatever you want to call that, will stick out with a support underneath. So the next two pieces have to be bent into a triangle shape which is quite difficult because it built, built, it's bent in the opposite direction to your first bend. So it's very hard to, on a flat surface, no matter what way you try and position it, to bend it. Now, I have done it. I have managed to do it, and I don't know if this is going to show up or not. But there it is bent. So that top lip will sit over the edge of the platform, and then I've got this piece here bent up at the bottom at 45 degrees and the top one bent straight across and flat. And the only way to bend that piece across and flat 
is to work it down and manipulate it down with tweezers until you get a, until you get it straight and at the right angle across. Now I've got to do three more of those. It just took me half an hour to do one, <laughs> uh, but I got it. Now that that'll fit and that'll sit on there perfectly, but it's not what they expect in the photo for it to go on. And to be honest, I don't see any point in it sitting like that. So if that's going to show that little piece in the top there, where am I pointing? Wrong place. So that U piece there, no chance. It's going to sit flat across there. To get two more bends within a millimeter and half a millimeter apart at the top there, it's just not possible. So it's going to fit. It's bending that way, that way, up at 45 degrees and back straight flat. Okay, so just a heads up. Uh, I know this isn't the correct photo which, um, for this model, for this particular CV68, but you will have the same problem when you have the correct photo etch because I'm sure it will be the same because this will fit on this but it's just not possible to bend it the way they expect it to be okay so I'm going to go ahead and finish these and attach them all on um, take these all off on the floor um, there's, there's, there's pieces A1 there's two pieces marked A1 and then there's an A2 and I'll see that there's another little well, this is more, um, so they've got D1, D2 attaching to the bottom, I assume, on all of these. Yes, so Trumpeter's instructions aren't too clear here, but these are movable. They're all movable up and down, but it only shows a4 piece which is this piece here having these d1 d2 bits which are what the pieces are that slide up and down the rails on the side of the carrier to allow you to move it up and down there's nowhere here that's telling you to do it on the other three pieces which means if you don't the others won't be able to move they're just going to be fixed um, so if you want all your platforms movable then you need to put d1 d2 on all of them and I'm going to just check to make sure that there is D1, D2 uh, enough of them for four. Okay, so D1 and D2 there's only one of each. So the D1 and D2 only go on that particular piece not on the others. So if you don't put, don't have it on the others it does say the others are movable. It's got movable here and here. Um, then I don't know why it's not showing that piece. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what, when you look at the pictures, D1 and D2 is on all of these pieces. Okay? It's on all of them. But you only have enough to do one. So that means that only you just have to choose which platform you want to have be able to go up and down because there's not enough even though it shows in the picture that it's got those pieces you can there's only enough for one so there's a there's a, a pretty serious error in the instructions there because if they're they're saying that they're all movable well they're not because you don't have enough pieces to make them movable okay I'll get this done and we'll come back and we'll have a look at most likely um, fitting the hangar bay um, walls and so forth. Okay, back shortly. Oh, and just a correction there. I've just gone back and looked at the other piece, which is the one that's got um, A4 with the D1, D2. And it looks like they have got the missing piece of, D, of D1, D2. There is spots for it to go on and all the other ones already have them okay so why that one doesn't already have it and why that is actually pieces that need to be attached 
I don't know. Why didn't they make it with the others? Anyway, that's just one of these things to try and fool us. <laughs> okay, so it does look like all these platforms can move up and down. All right, back shortly. Okay, hello, welcome back. Um, so what I've got here is I'm, I've put in the hangar floor deck um, into the hull. And just a tip, it's a tight fit. And you've got to maneuver it around a little bit. Um, there's some spots there where it doesn't seem to sit flat. Um, there's some bowing in the in the um, superstructure outwards, and you might be tempted to maybe put some clamps on um, to hold it in, because what I want to do is I haven't glued uh, it down yet because I wanted to test fit the flight deck. And fortunately, having a clear flight deck to test with is coming useful because even though I'm not using the clear one, I can see through it and I can see that that it's all fitted properly and everything's in its spot. So that makes it a bit easier. So when that's on, then you know that the hangar deck is, is going to be okay. It's not going to affect pushing anything out that shouldn't be and then have the deck flight deck be a problem lining up. So that's fine. So I can take that off now. Off, right. And now you can see that this is sitting down. It's in there. It's flat. Um, there was a, a gap in here, and I thought of putting a clamp in here and just to bring it in um, for when I glue this down. But if I did that, then this would not line up with the flight deck on top. So everything's fine as it is. Um, so what I was also going to do, there's there's certain spot over this side here that seems a bit high. And I was just concerned because I'm now about to put all the walls in here and I want them all to be the correct height because they're going to come up level with the bottom of the flight deck. And if anything's not flush and flat down there, that's going to affect the flight deck going on. Um, but I think I've got it right. I, I'm pretty sure it's it's fine. So what I'll do now will be I'm going to glue that down, glue this down. Um, I'll put a little bit of weight on there just to let that till the glue sets, and then that'll be fine. And then we we'll be ready to build up all the inside of the hangar bay. Um, I've also painted the waterline base. Now obviously I don't need to paint the bottom or the top because it's all going to be underneath our ship. But I have done the waterline. Oh, sorry, there it is. So the waterline there in, in black, which is makes the job easy when it's like this. There's no tape, taping or anything. No masking. And I've already test fitted that and it's not a problem at all. Um, this sits down on it nicely. Um, there is uh, some couple of points where I'll need to put some weight on and let it sit so it's it's flat. Um, but I would also suggest doing this after you've done this hangar deck floor because you need to get under there to, to do all your gluing, um, all the glue points, and also part of manipulating, of getting it in, uh, and sitting in tight, you need to access underneath. So once that's glued in, then I can pop the whole thing down onto this. Even though the instructions, this is one of the very last steps, um, I still want to put this in because then it gives me the opportunity to use the base here uh, to whack something like this, and I've got something to hold the ship with, continue working on it. All right, so I will um, get on with this. I've got the actual flight deck in the other room with the elevators all undercoated. 
that was done yesterday so they're ready to paint today and the flight deck will be as well as the top of the elevators will be painted the same nato black i've done this there'll be a little bit of taping to do on that flight deck um, so we can so i can do the outside gray around as well as the platforms the tops of these um, elevators um, they'll need to be taped over so the outside of those can be done in the gray that's all simple stuff and we'll we'll get to that that was, that's for another episode all right so i'll be back shortly okay welcome back again um so the walls are going in well um i've glued down the floor no problem i've also glued down the the base for the waterline feature that's glued in um i can just move this and i'll show you look under there just be careful so there's the base all glued in it's almost done um, as you can see i'm building up the walls around here i uh, just got to go down this side and across and some other bits and pieces um, some hanger doors which will be open they'll go in there and uh they're going in quite easily. A um, couple little issues where I've had to trim back. Some of the um, detailed piping runs back under. This is like a platform on top that's sitting here. You can see. Probably best to look in that way. You can see in under there. But where these edges butt against the two walls here, um, the piping is right where this platform is and it touches so it doesn't sit flush against the wall. So I just had to trim them off. Uh, well, I trimmed off one side. Um, the other side um, <laughs> depends how detailed you want to be, but you're never going to see this. I mean, the only view in here will be through this porthole here. And you're only really going to see there. So you're not going to see any of this. Now, obviously, if you're doing the clear transparent top, then yes, that would be a problem. And you will have to trim off some of the detail. So that platform will sit flush in there. As you can see, there's a gap. There's a gap in there where it's not sitting in there. And that's because of some of the piping detail. Um, so that's fine um, I'm going to continue further all the way around here now that putting this in went me got me back to step two in the instructions now I'm in step three uh, and I'll be able to once I've done this side of the walls um, I'll be able to cross off step three will be done completely then we'll be able to step four where I've got some hanger doors which are in the other room they've painted their right to go on to so i'll be able to put them on um, some of the cross sections in the in the center here um, they're painted up they'll be able to go in um, so we may even get to cross off step four as well um, there are a couple of things i haven't made um, these little bits and pieces here that sit on the floor in in the hangar bay which i'll hand paint because they're just because they're so small i'll hand paint them and there's antennas there's two antennas to go at this stage but they're on the outside of the ship up here um and i don't don't want to put antennas on until i really have to because those things get knocked off easily that's all done yep so that that'll be able to cross off that step five is the hangar doors on the other side which we've done they'll be open so there'll be parts optional parts there that won't be needed and uh, a few more parts on the floor in the hangar bay and uh, cutter one cutter two is some lifeboats which go in here which aren't done yet so we'll probably get to around about this level uh, anyway it's good to see it's starting to 
um, look like a aircraft carrier and it's starting to come together. All right, so back in a second. Okay, welcome back again. Um, so I've finished all the uh, interior walls of the hangar deck. They're all sitting in there nicely. Um, yeah, it looks, looks quite good. Now inside here, the instructions have some racks. There's two racks to go in the back here and on them will be a couple of launches. They call them cutters. So um, those boats I'm doing now, I've done the racks, they're here. And the boats, well, I'm just hand painting these because sometimes when, you, when you're working at this scale, like 1,700, um, it's not really, I don't think it's really worth um, mixing your paints and getting airbrush set up to spray um, something so small. Um, so I'll hand paint them. Um, I got no problem doing that. They come up quite well and these are actually going to be inside here. So the only way you're going to see them will be looking through the side of the ship. Um, but even if they were on board the ship somewhere, um, they're very tiny. And sometimes just the hand hand painting stuff with a brush, the details can be just as good, if not anything. I mean, it can even help with the weathering. Um, when, when the paint job's not perfect, I mean, there is no such thing as a perfect paint job when it comes to building ships anyway. I mean, there's, there's always going to be... Um, you know, there's always going to be um, cracks and splits and water and rust and everything else. So, you know, it, there's, it's like the Arizona I recently built. It was 200 scale and it came up really nice. It looks, I think it looks great. <laughs> um, but what I did with that was I didn't do anything with the deck. So the deck was extra, the wooden deck. I've left that on just plain and it looks brand new. It's like it's never had a boot print on it. And that doesn't look right. So I will at some point, and it will be a bit um, touchy just trying to weather it when I've got to work around so much stuff that's on the deck, but it does need weathering. So, so that's what I mean by hand painting. Sometimes when you, you hand paint things, um, you know, it just doesn't have, it just shows that imperfection imperfections in it. And, uh, you know, so there, there's the boat there I've just done with, uh, just gonna start with deck ten. It's not much. I, I might. I'll do the other bits a, a darker color, maybe a dark gray. And um, and they're done. You know, um, there was another piece of wall in here that's, you know, got some detail on it um, that came appeared sec later in the kit. Um, that I could have painted if I when I'd done all the other interior bits. And why this one showed up later, you know, one step past everything else, I don't know why they didn't say build two. <laughs> um, but because I'd already painted them, I had to put this together. So I just hand painted this one as well. That's fine. The same with, um, here, you know, I've, I've, there's a piece of wall in the back corner of the ship here that, again, I don't know why they didn't ask that to go on earlier. And there's no reason why it could it couldn't have. And since then, I've painted the ship, and now I've got to put this wall there that's going to be the same color of the ship. So again, I'm not going to get the airbrush out to paint something that's, you know, less than an inch long. Uh, so I'll hand paint that as well, uh, and it'll come up just as good. It's the back wall behind that gun uh, on the side there, so. It'll be fine. It just means that when it comes to weathering, it just won't need quite as much as everything else. <laughs> so, 
unlike you know it, i've never built a model car and i envy those that do and when i look at the paint jobs on those model cars and i think wow how how cool is that there is something where you need to be as perfect as you can I mean, i'm not talking about the rust buckets and those type of detail old cars that they've got dioramas of them it might be sitting in a paddock rusting or something that's different but a brand new porsche or ferrari or something that they've built and they get these paint jobs that are like the real thing if you just bought bought one driven out of the showroom that's just amazing so something like that you can't oh no i forgot to put this bit down here below the on the fender it's okay i'll just hand paint it <laughs> that's not, not going to work is it so anyway and then we've gone from over from step five we'll be into step six which is the actual hanger deck which just reminds me i need to go paint Okay, welcome back. So I'll just show you how I go about spraying the deck here. So I've got my undercoat on there. I've started doing the black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue up just in a white patchy sort of way, applying the black. I'm not going to put too much on the outside here because that's going to be painted grey. But I'll be taping that up later. But just show you how how I get the effect of um, a worn deck. There we go. I can hear this getting a little bit bogged up. I'm just going to get the pressure up again. Seems okay. Yep. about close to how I want it. I think I just want a bit more down here. On the edge there. And I think that might do. I'll leave a little bit patchy around where the elevators are. 
because I've already painted them. I did just a few minutes before I started this one. You'll see how light that is compared to there. So they may need a bit another coat. In fact, they will need another coat. See that already. I'm going to let that dry. I'll give these a bit more. Hopefully they should all come up really nice and um, you know, not won't be too dark, it'll look a bit worn. I mean there's still a lot of weathering to do on it. But uh, that should be quite good. Yeah. Alright back shortly. And uh, I don't know if you hear um, some noise in the background. I, I know normally in my videos you'll hear birds because I live opposite a park that's full of parrots and lorikeets and so forth. But I also have a lot of um, people in hold up cars that like to speed up and down around these streets. But we have a big thunderstorm on the way over at the moment. I just heard the thunder in the background. So um, I'm going to get this done, get my stuff painted. I'd hate to have a blackout, but uh, yeah, it should be okay. But... All right, back shortly, guys. Okay, welcome back. And uh, so I've completed everything on the hull here. Uh, all the hangar bays done. I've got the lifeboats in there. Um, yeah, pretty much got the racks on there, all, all of it's all to done, all done. So I'll move this out of the way and show you what we'll be doing now will be the deck is now painted, as you saw, and so are the, uh, the elevators. So, um, the next um, video will be working on these. We've got to cut some of the plastic off around the outside here and replace it with photo etch. Um, there's a lot of work to be done on the outside of here. Um, there's brass wire to be put in here for the catapult, uh, for the landings, I mean. Um, yeah, there's lots of stuff. So we're going to wind up the video here and... Um, We'll, we'll start all that in the next part. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Please comment below if you've got any comments, anything you want to say, any tips, suggestions, ideas, uh, whatever. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like, if you like the video, and um, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, hit that notifications bell and get updates as these videos come out. Okay, so. That's it for part four, and I'll see you hopefully in part five. Bye for now.